KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Tunnel Program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Coming up on Primetime, today marks six months since a public health emergency was declared for the island. Plus, a lawsuit was filed by residents who feel their civil rights are being violated for being unfairly quarantined. And your elected senators debate the governor's substitute budget bill. Alpha Day and good evening. It may seem like a lifetime ago, but it was six months ago today that the governor signed an executive order declaring a public health emergency. She had to mark the occasion with the grim announcement that a 10-year-old boy died at the Naval Hospital. He was Guam's 26th COVID-related fatality. To the parents, family, and friends of that young boy, we cannot imagine the immeasurable grief you must be feeling. But this island griefs with you as we remember all that we have lost. These deaths are more than numbers we report. They are our people. It has become increasingly clear that this is the fight of our lifetimes. Our health and the health of our economy is dependent upon doing the right things the right way right now. Again, the governor says everyone has a role in defeating the virus by making the right choices, wearing a mask, social distancing and staying home. As for the latest out of the Guam Memorial Hospital, as of this morning, there were 48 COVID patients hospitalized there. 14 of them are receiving ICU level of care, and out of those 14, 12 are on ventilators. On the link this morning, we heard from GMH Associate Administrator for Clinical and Medical Services, Dr. Jolene Uggen, who is also the EMS COVID Medical Director and the Medical Director for the hospital's intensive care unit. She candidly shares with us what it's like every day on the floor for our island's doctors, nurses, and hospital employees. I've never uh, seen this hospital in this condition. It's tough to, to even walk into these wards because you know that your risk of being exposed is there, but you're the only ones that can actually do it. You know, we go through uh, pep talks of trying to give each other the confidence to spend your entire day taking care of our community with COVID. You know, you, it's nothing that you've ever seen. Critically short-staffed, Dr. Jolene Uggen says it is all hands on deck at GMH. Everyone and anyone available are being called to help. We have physical therapy. We now have the medics, we have our couriers, we have our respiratory therapists going to the bedsides to assist our patients. According to Dr. Uggen, patients are incredibly sick and it has been a non-stop response. For a, a good seven day stretch, all you heard was code blues. People sitting up, are you doing better? How's your breathing today? Thumbs up, doing well. Three hours later, code blue, code blue intubated. How do you plan for that? Clinically, they are, they are responding. Their, their oxygen level, their requirements are getting better. And then they turn and then they, they're seizing. Despite the pressures of the job and deteriorating conditions at the hospital, such as leaking roofs, the nurses, doctors, and staff continue to show up day in and day out. My docs, you know, they're, they're down. They're down to get down. They're down to help. We, we have to go and force them to come off shift to take a break. It's absolutely exhausting. And they, you know, who wouldn't be afraid? None of us have signed up to, to take this risk you know, every single day, but that's what we face. You know, Saturday was my first day with my children. I have family that are high risk. I deploy 
to get this done. It is a Monday through Sunday, 24 seven operation. And that's what we do. You can watch the entire interview with Dr. Ogan right now on our YouTube channel. The clock is ticking in the meantime for GMH to finalize a contract for much needed medical staff as part of its agreements with the feds. Guam Memorial Hospital Administrator Lillian Posadas is hoping to have a contract for a contingent of traveling nurses signed, sealed and delivered by no later than September 21st. The contract is part of the agreement with FEMA, which approved GovGuam's plan for the DOD medical team that was temporarily deployed here to provide support to GMH. The hospital has 30 days to finalize this contract before the DOD team leaves at the end of this month. According to Posadas, this morning they received the latest revision from the staffing solutions company they're working with. And we're having also legal review it. And hopefully that we can come to a final draft by today and we send it back to them and we'll see what they say. And if we sign it by tomorrow, uh, we have the governing body um, sign it and you know the legal counsel gives us a blessing, then we may have uh, an official um, contract with them. And the target date, we're still shooting for the 21st of September that they can then provide us with the additional hemodialysis nurses that we need, the additional ICU, CCU nurses that we need. Posada says they initially requested for eight hemodialysis nurses and 20 ICU critical care nurses. Funding sources, we're going to use FEMA, we're going to apply for FEMA, but up front we're going to have to, you know, cover the cost. But we're also working with FEMA, uh, HHS, to see how they can, you know, um, expedite and facilitate the funding uh, stream to GMH. Mm -hmm. So we will have, uh, you know, support and uh, you know, funding backup from FEMA, and we're also looking at the, the CARES funds. GMH is looking to pay anywhere between $175 to $195 per hour per nurse. As for the DOD medical team, they're scheduled to leave Guam on September 30th, but according to Posadas, they've asked for a two-week extension. Dr. Jenna Manglonia is no longer the medical director for public health. She retired from the agency effective Saturday. Manglonia tells KUAM she started her retirement process over a year ago and had planned to retire earlier this year, but then COVID-19 happened. Manglonia also said she will continue to perform telehealth services for Veterans Affairs CBOC facility. Public health director Art St. Augustine confirms he's trying to keep Manglonia on as a part-time consultant, but those plans and who Manglonia's permanent replacement will be have not been finalized. In a statement, Governor Lulian Guerrero called Menglotnia a public health warrior whose career has been marked by courage, candor, and unceasing contributions to those she served. The mandatory 14-day quarantine in a GovGuam facility is travelers yet again reaching out to attorneys pleading for help to be released, arguing their civil rights are being violated. In the latest case over the weekend, the Superior Court of Guam ruled in favor of civilians. However, according to plaintiff attorney Rachel Azuzu, public health is still not complying and a class action lawsuit is pending. Adriana Cotero reports. There is a bigger problem that's going on uh, with public health, and the court has recognized that problem. The problem? No written directive. Attorney Rachel Azuzu represents Customs Officer Eugene Egros, despite having negative COVID-19 results upon arrival on September 1st. Egros, along with his family of four, remain in one room at a mandatory 14-day GovGuam quarantine facility. I file this petition on behalf of myself and my family. Um, I'm not filing this petition uh, on behalf of my position as a, as a customs officer. I got a negative test result. Okay, that, the bottom line is I went, we all got COVID testing, and we all got negative test results. So, you know, why, why quarantine me at a government facility or, or, or this hotel when I have my own home? Egros has brought this question forward to the Superior Court, having filed a lawsuit against public health. According to the petition, Egros argues quarantine at a government facility is not voluntary, is in violation of his rights, and he asks for a release to home quarantine. In Judge Elise Iriarty's decision and order issued on Saturday, September 12th, the court finds that Egros's quarantine was not voluntary but mandatory and orders all travelers receive a physical copy of their rights prior to signing a voluntary quarantine document.
Additionally, the egros are to stay at the quarantine facility unless they test negative by day 12. The court found that public health as of uh, Friday, Saturday, and even as of today, Monday, has no valid written directive for quarantine of these individuals at this government facility. So um, right now they're being held without uh, improperly. Public health has the option to properly file a 30 day directive with the courts, explains Azuzu. Continuously and regularly, and we have to, uh, public health has to explain to the judge why a continued government facility quarantine is, is uh, necessary. And this isn't the first time DPHSS stood as a defendant in court on similar issues. Then director Linda Denorsi utilized powers under a public state health emergency to place travelers in quarantine facilities. And that March directive has since expired. And public health did nothing to try to revive it, nothing to try to extend it. Um, and all on the basis that they have this emergency health power as if this emergency health power allows them to bypass the same requi the requirements that are contained in the same uh, statute that they are relying on. Attorney Azuzu says bottom line since April to present, public health has been operating these government facilities for quarantine illegally. She is now putting together a class action lawsuit for people like Eugene, who did not receive notice of their rights and were placed in a facility since April without a valid written directive. In the meantime, Egros and his family are still waiting for their release. Yes, you know, it's a, it's a uh, what, four or five star hotel, it's beautiful. But my home is my palace. The governor keeps saying, you know, uh, uh, stay at home order, stay at home order. Hello, governor, this is not my home, I have a home. Let me go home. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. The AG's office responds saying Guam law allows public health to quarantine travelers for only 10 days before needing a court order. The science behind this current threat to our safety has proven the justification of a 14-day quarantine, which has become a standard across the globe. Thankfully, the vast majority of travelers are willingly staying at a government facility an additional four days, a small step toward helping save the lives of our people and contain the spread of COVID in our community. The court's decision was disappointing and we disagree with the judge's analysis, but the important work of public health must continue, so we are discussing available options with our client. Stay tuned, more news after the break. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Nachos come with rules, like don't take the fully loaded chips, don't hog the guac, and never take the last one. But with the Grande Nachos box from Taco Bell, you can break all the rules, because this meal's all yours. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the islands. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come.
While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Pablo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. We give most of our waking hours to preserve yours. When we're in it, nothing exists but you and the person that needs your help. It can be difficult at times. You can't help but take the weight of what you've seen home with you. There are days or nights that I need to leave it all behind, to let it go in the wind. But I'll always come back. I am a first responder, and I have given my life to this. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Welcome back. Senators met in a special session today to debate the budget bill submitted by the governor after she vetoed the legislature's spending plan. Nestor Lacanto reports. The difference between the bill that the governor vetoed and what the governor wants is about $7 million in spending. And Budget Director Lester Carlson says most of that, almost $6 million, is for Medicaid percentage matching funds. He says it would boost the allotment from $97 million to $131 million. Everything else that was put into the bill was not changed. But the sticking point is over the revenue projections. Several senators and the Legislative Office of Finance and Budget have said, in a struggling economy that's not expected to get better anytime soon, the legislature's revenue projection is already very conservative. Another way of saying it's about the best that can be realistically expected. And that's the dilemma Senator Mary Torres raised in her questions to Administration Director Edward Byrne. Seven million in the grand scheme is less than one percent. It really is, if you were to use a term, chum change. It, 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 it can be categorized as that. But it also has been told that that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. However, we do know that, that if we don't reach that, we are forced to go into fiscal realignment. I'm an accountant and I like accurate figures, but to, uh, to be in a disagreement about a figure of less than 1%, when, as you say, the mechanism operates at 3%, uh, doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. As both Byrne and Torres alluded to, if revenues fall 3% below projections, the governor would be required to adjust the budget. But Byrne adds that he has, quote, every confidence in the projections as presented by Budget Director Carlson. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. The chairman of the Finance Committee is pushing back on the governor's claims that the budget bill shortchanges health agency budgets. Senator Joe San Augustine says the federal government has poured millions of dollars into Guam for pandemic-related spending that the administration should be tapping into. If the governor's going to say that we need to do better, it begins with her. It begins with her on the CARES Act. Um, and when we talked about, remember, I, I kicked out that first comment about the surplus fund from 2019. Mm -hmm. We put it in the budget to give GMAs 10 million to help on their CIP. Several other senators have also criticized the administration for not spending the 10 million for GMH repairs, despite being on the books for two budget cycles. St. Augustine is also critical of what he believes is the governor's lack of transparency over where all the CARES Act money is being spent. That's what really bothers us is that, you know, if, if we're saying as of August 24th, 24.7% is, is as a uh, total cost incurred. Well, I'm not going to say that they didn't encumber anything at the governor's office, but what else is there? What else is left? Because we haven't received a report. I have to look this up on the, on the webpage of the office of the inspector general to see this amount. St. Augustine says he's concerned that the administration is using general fund money for expenses that can instead be covered by CARES funds. 
It's not a good look. That's the reaction coming from senators on the Gora Board's decision to give pandemic pay raises to the director and deputy director. Peter Santos has more. Nobody should be getting any pay raises. Nobody across the government of Guam or even in, in any uh, government Guam related uh, federal agency. Legislative Gura Oversight Chair Senator Joseph Augustine said he was unaware of the raises and that the timing is just not right. The Gura Board approving pay raises of 4% for both the director and deputy director, bringing the director's salary to $159,498 and the deputy director's salary to $111,224. St. Augustine added that the governor should step in and advise the board to hold off on the raises. Senators Therese Terlahi and Telo Taitigui also shared their views on the pay raises. Here we are, yeah, we're arguing about public health, you know, money, and give me a break. We're going to give people raises in the middle of this thing, people who are already making over $100,000? This is federal funding that can go actually to those individuals who really need it at GURA, who seek assistance for federal funding. This money can go directly to them. It doesn't need to go to the director, who is already the highest paid uh, director on island right now by giving him, or, or the deputy. For the full interview, visit our KUAM YouTube page. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Peter Santos. Chuck E. Cheese is closing. The family restaurant and entertainment venue announced it will be shutting its doors in mid-October after 10 years in Guam. Chuck E. Cheese said until then it will continue with ticket and token redemption deals as well as take-home pizza and party packages. The franchise chain's corporate owner, CEC Entertainment, filed for bankruptcy reorganization in June but said it will continue to operate other stores in the mainland U.S. Amongst the rising impacts from COVID-19, Harvard Harvest Christian Academy faculty adds a voice for education. Four leaders of Harvest drafted an editorial letter detailing concerns with long-term online learning for students. Back in August, Harvest Christian Academy had one day of face-to-face -face learning before the governor's executive order that immediately shifted the island from PCOR 1 or, excuse me, from PCOR 3 to PCOR 1. According to Administrator Jeremy Sijek, it's been over 170 days since Guam students have been in class, and he says online learning is an inadequate substitute. Social development, um, that's key. When uh, we give an example in the article um, of if you were unable to have a face-to-face -face relationship with your child, how would that be affected over the course of 170 days? Let's say you could do unlimited Zoom and talk to him on the phone. The reality is your relationship with your child would change um, from a distance standpoint. Harvest says along with the stunt in social development, learning trajectories will fall. The private school tells KUAM they have brought these concerns forward to the governor on multiple occasions and feel a conversation worth having is to allow schools the ability to offer face-to-face -face education as a choice for parents. We just want to add to the narrative that we we need to keep considering um, just the consequences because I think they're building. The longer we go where we don't have face-to-face -face education, I think those consequences are going to keep building. And um, we need to at least think and, and just start the conversation right now. What are those consequences going to be in the future and how can we prepare now um, for helping to write some of those consequences? You can watch the full interview with Harvest Christian Academy streaming live on our YouTube page and view the letter in its entirety on our website. Coming up, we kick off our new segment with the island's diehard NFL fans, Fanatic Zoom Zone. Keep it here. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Hold up, stop. What? You sure you want to do this? Because once you take that bite, there's no turning back to breakfast like this. Nope. Or this. Ooh. Or this. Wow. It's time to change your life. 
for breakfast with freshly prepared buttery crispy McChicken biscuits and savory sweet chicken McGriddles. Now at McDonald's nationwide. Wake up breakfast. When I need to pay my Docomo Pacific bills or manage my account, all I do is visit mydocomopacific.com. It's easy to set up. I just visit the website and click on the link to set up my account. I filled up the registration page starting with my account number. I receive a text message with a temporary username and password. After making initial changes on my security settings, I'm in! Now I can make payments or manage my Docomo Pacific account without needing to leave home. With Docomo Pacific, we're better together. We have the power to improve the schools our kids learn in, the roads we drive on, the health care we receive, and the opportunities for more jobs. By responding to the 2020 Census of Guam, we can uplift future generations by providing them with the resources they need to grow as a community. Together, we can make a difference. Respond today. Welcome back. With the much-anticipated NFL season well underway, every Monday our Dave Delgado catches up with local fans in the Fanatic Zoom Zone and talks their love of the game, predictions for the season, and even potential trash talk about their team's rivals. Dave Delgado here for Fanatic Zoom Zone. Today we have Dr. Shea. You can see he's with the Green Bay Packers. Now, Doc, uh, tell us when the love for your team first started. Way back in medical school. That's why I went to this great state of Wisconsin where Lambeau Field is built. So when I got into med school, I said, that's it. I'm going to go to Wisconsin. So that's how we got started. And then we became a Packer owner ever since then. Let's talk about some game day traditions you have. We always look for Jersey Day. That's why we had Jersey Day because today is, you know, I think three in the morning Guam time. So whenever we have clinic, we wear our jerseys for a game time tradition and we always have a feast. Your two top players. Of course, he's right here. Say hi, Aaron. Half a day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other player right now, I would have to say Devontae Adams. So hopefully this year we get back to the top two so we can bring back. The Super Bowl trophy. There. We need another one of these. Which game do you always have circle on your calendar? Oh, my God. That's got to be Chicago Bears. We don't like the Bears. We don't like the Bears, right? Boo! No Bears. Go, Pack, go! Go, Pack, go! Go, Pack, go! Coming up, your birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Keep it here. Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker is back with a big, bold taste and a sweet marinara sauce on a crust that's 30% larger than our large. Handmade to perfection. It's just $9.99 per carryout. The Big New Yorker, only at your island pizza hut. Our island is a gift that we have shared with the world. But in the stillness of today, our island is asking everyone to give us a moment. To be with our family, If I'm going to our children, our grandchildren, it is not the, our land, our thoughts. To be creative. to have faith. To be with the things we know and the things you've come to love. 
give us a moment and we will share one together soon. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. Before we close out the news tonight, here is your latest round of birthday shout outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. September 14th is a Monday and that means it's your day if today's your birthday. So happy birthday to Jerley Yu. Happy birthday, Doc. Thanks for your service in the front lines. We miss you and pray for you always. Loving kisses from your parents, Gigi, Richard, and the rest of the familia. Thank you for your service, Doc. We appreciate it on 